And I now give the floor to the representative of the Russian Federation. Madam President, our delegation from the very begin spoke against the inclusion of the agenda item on responsibility to protect in the agenda of this GA session. We consider this to be a mistake. Allow me to summarize the history of this issue. The only accepted source for this concept, that of R2P, was the outcome document of the 2005 Global Summit. However, since then, so over 13 years, states have yet to be able to agree on a single definition of its provisions. Moreover, this concept, which has always garnered a wide range of views, has consistently degraded. Therefore, on this backdrop, instead of continuing our interactive dialogue, in the fall of 2017, a group of states forced a vote in the General Committee and then in the General Assembly so as to achieve the holding of today's meeting. Such methods have only led to greater confrontation, and this has been confirmed by today's discussion. The result is that the initiators of the vote are destroying the fragile consensus of 2005 with their own hands, and we can now state that this consensus no longer exists. It's worth noting that R2P has never been a norm or a rule, but before at least there was an understanding of its conceptual basis and now we don't even have this. Madam President, in the Secretariat's reports, including in document A-72-884, stroke stroke they note um, sort of progress in the implementation of this concept. And it's very difficult for under us to understand what this would mean, and there is no confirmation of this progress in the report itself. There are attempts every year to note some, some sort of formulations being achieved, including the creation of national focal points. We have yet to see any practical results from these steps. The reports in, uh, should lay out the concepts that are being discussed, all the points of view, and it should also discuss those issues which need to be agreed upon but there have yet to be these things described in any of these reports. And in paragraph 8 of this version, it shows that the special advisor um, held consultations with member states in preparing this report. But however, in these round tables, there was strong criticism brought against the practices of its adoption and the concept itself. But why are we not seeing them reflected in the report? Over many years, uh, many delegations have spoken about serious issues with the concepts during the interactive dialogues and in other formats. Nevertheless, in the documents of the Secretariat, these uh, gaps continue to not be discussed. And we expect that this discussion in the S General Assembly would at some point maybe change the views on this discussion, but we have yet to see this in practice, Madam President. Now allow me to discuss the substance of the contradictions in, on this concept which has yet to, which ha, no longer has consensus. In the very beginning, this instrument was conceived as one that would contribute significantly to strengthening international peace and security. The idea had powerful and positive humanitarian potential. However, its use in practice was a catastrophe. The populations that it was called upon to protect, as a result, suffered even more. Now, responsibility to protect is associated with such uh, a series of events. An illegal uh, military interference in, from uh, foreign forces, a regime change, the destruction of the state, and then uh, paralysis in the governance and economic disaster. So what are the outcomes of this practical use? The actions of the NATO coalition against Libya led to chaos and instability in that country. Uh, there were human victims and undermining of the state system and infrastructure. Uh, 
ISIS infiltrated Libya, their enormous migration crisis has also been seen in the Mediterranean, and, and this is continuing to date until today. The attempts for change in Libya had one goal, to change the leadership of that country. And after Muammar Gaddafi was killed and his government was uh, removed from power, the protection of civilians was quickly forgotten. This is now what we associate with the responsibility to protect. And then there's another even m more recent example. On the 14th of April, 2018, three permanent members of the UN Security Council, which are uh, required to uh, m adhere to the charter's provisions on the non-use of force, they uh, carried out an aggressive attack against the sovereign state, that of Syria. And after these events, the government of Great Britain could not find anything better to do than to focus on the philosophy of a humanitarian intervention. Let me recall that this concept, that of the responsibility of protect, under which the this is the same idea that was taking place when NATO dropped bombs on Yugoslavia. Madam President, the responsibility for the barbarous interference into the uh, uh, affairs of the former, Yugosla former Yugoslavia, Libya, and Syria were not, uh, no one was prosecuted for these crimes. They were carried out with impunity. But perhaps it should now be time to examine these grave violations of international laws. Madam President. In conclusion, I wish once again to reiterate our position on the fact that any formulation of a discussion on responsibility to protect is not beneficial, and in many cases, it's completely useless. Until we see the ideologists of this concept, a readiness to discuss the contradictions it includes and the admission of the fact that there are clear misuses of this concept and catastrophic mistakes, then there will be no attempts to move this concept forward. This is why we are against the inclusion of this issue as a standing item on the UNGA's agenda. But the current debates in the General Assembly nevertheless were beneficial in one way. They once again showed that if we cannot carry out work on mistakes that were made, then the concept will repeat the history of its uh, ancestor, that of humanitarian intervention. So it will finally be forgotten. I thank the representative of the Russian Federation.